Hey everybody. Um, okay, so I'm going to give people a few minutes to get on. We're going to um, talk fundraisers for just a little bit. And if you have specific questions, um, go ahead and ask them. I'll try to look at the comments and go from there. But I'll give everybody just a few minutes to get on and then we will talk fundraisers again for a minute. Um, I will go over um, real quickly some of the stuff that we went over last week and um, then a few other things. So, And then we have the amazing Patty Knight that's going to um, cover in detail, and I'll touch on it. She's going to cover in detail Scent Circle fundraisers and, okay, is my screen free? Okay, there. It's back. Okay, did my screen freeze for a minute? Oh, Stephanie, you're passing out 150 envelopes tomorrow. Wow. It's going to be an awesome one. Hey, Heather. Um, Stephanie, who are you doing the, what kind of organization are you doing the 150 for? Okay, well, I'm waiting on your comment. I'm going to go ahead and get started because I know people can um, go back and watch this later. So, um, briefly, I want to cover, like I said, a few things that we did that we went over last week. I'm, it's not going to be near as long as last week's. We went through a lot of stuff last week. And then, um, like I said, Patty is going to cover in detail the Scent Circle, Car Bar, Buddy Clip, you know, those type of fundraisers. Um, and I'll focus more on the fundraisers that are um, the full catalog or the showcase brochure. Um, young football and cheer team. That's awesome. Okay, so if y'all have questions, don't hesitate to ask. Um, one of the things that we covered last week was how to get your fundraisers, who to talk to, what type of fundraisers to do. Um, the best way to get your fundraisers is to make a list of organizations. Make a list of places in your community that you think could benefit from a Sensi fundraiser. It could be your school, it could be a mission trip. We discussed mission trips last week and how I do my mission trip fundraisers. Um, a lot of times I do those with giving her a basket party about a week ahead of time and then pretty much closing it out with a home party and then we'll close it out about two days after the home party. So those tend to go over extremely well because everybody wants to support um, her and her mission trip or him and their, his mission trip, but yet they get something out of it as well. So um, let's say mission trip, football and cheer, like Stephanie said, um, dance teams. And one of the ones I mentioned last week that a lot of people don't think about are uh, nursing homes. Nursing homes sometimes like to do them to gather, um, to kind of gather funds for their residents to purchase um, gifts or to purchase the supplies to make gifts for their family members at Christmas time. So I've done those. Um, but just sit down and make a list. Let's see if there's any that I kind of missed. Um, and, and you can do the individual fundraisers. Um, pet Rescue Band, any sport organization, school trips, um, youth groups. So yesterday, my son, he's in a new school. He just started high school this year and he's at a private school, which I cannot afford. But um, anybody that knows my son, uh, he's 15, almost 16, but he has some, uh, he has some issues that makes him a little different. So I knew going into high school, he was not going to be able to handle the um, the high school here, the public high school. There was just no way. So I've been working really hard this summer to try to get him into and um, figure out the funds and the financial aid and everything to get him into a private Christian school. 
and it finally all worked out. Um, God really worked in our favor. He, we did a lot of praying, and God has really blessed us with that. So anyway, he's in this private school. Well, a lot of the parents in this school, I mean, funds, money's not that big of a deal. So he comes home with this trip that he wants to go on. And I'm thinking, I'm already paying for you to go to this school. It's to Washington, D.C. and New York City. And I'm just going, oh, my goodness. How in the world am I going to do this? Well, since he fundraiser. So um, that's another option, these school trips that these kids go on. Um, mine have done, the in the past, they have done the Washington, D.C. fundraisers especially for like a fifth or sixth grade. They've done really, really well because they're earning money and the youth groups because they're earning money for themselves. So um, make your list. Sit down, make a list of who you want to approach. And then just start with your list. Doesn't need to be done all in one day. Um, break it up into sections. Do what, do what you can do in a day. Contact these organizations. And when I say contact them, I mean find out who their contact person is that, that deals with their um, Okay, there you go. Um, okay, so try to set up a personal face-to-face -face meeting. If you can get face-to-face -face with that person and you have material there to present to them, they are going to be more apt to do a fundraiser with us than if you were to do it over the phone, if you were to mail them something, if you were to email them. And I do not recommend emailing, to be honest. Um, emails get deleted too easy or not get, they don't get seen. You have to do these phone call face to face. That's just my personal opinion. And um, so find out their contact person, try to get in touch with them, try to set up a meeting. When you go to that meeting, you're going to want to sell yourself. You're going to want to talk to them about, um, hey, Amy, love you. Um, you're going to want to talk to them about um, the benefits of a Sensi fundraiser because they're used to doing fundraisers where you get 50% back of the sales. Well, obviously we can't do that. So you have to sell other the other options. You have to sell them on the quality of the product, the, um, the variety that we have, price range ranging from our $3 cent circles and on up, the fact that people can afford to buy a $3 cent circle or they can afford to buy an $8 room spray um, instead of everything being $10 or $20 cookie dough or um, I bought a $20 box of candy one time. I mean, that's crazy to me. So um, sell them on our products. Sell them on how easy it is for them to sell um, as far as the ease, of, the ease of the product selling and the ease of the fundraiser, the fact that you're going to be doing um, all of the work. Um, I know I focused a lot on schools last week. Uh, so here's the deal. With schools, the PTO, they, especially PTO president, they're used to doing everything themselves or trying to get volunteers. They give out the packets. They collect the packets, they do the money, they, when it comes in, they separate it, organize it, everything, give it out, I mean everything. And it becomes a pain for them. It takes up a lot of their time and it's all, you know, their time is volunteer time. And they also have children and families. So one of the biggest selling points that we have is the fact that we do all the work. We, when it comes to a school, what I do, I get all the packets together, I label everything, um, now, one thing that I have done with the schools, and this is something that you can ask your school if you decide to do it or whatever organization you're doing, I do make copies of things to put in packets, and one of the schools here will let me actually, as long as I bring my own paper, 
make copies on their machine. Well, that's a huge money saver for me. Um, so you, I gather all the packets. I put them together in rubber band them and put them in each of the teacher's boxes. I put a teacher letter on the top. Um, I post big flyers all over the school and I covered that last week. I put them on the walls if they'll allow me. Um, every door going in and out of the school, the office door, everywhere. So everybody knows we're doing a Sensi fundraiser. I will um, take, let's see, where was I? Okay, oh, um, I offer the teachers an incentive. Their classroom sells the most, that teacher gets a warmer and a bar, or three bars, I can't remember what I did last time. Some of the teachers bite on that, some don't. Um, I told the story last week that I could tell which classroom the teacher did so much on um, because that classroom sold a ton. So when I went in there, I asked the teacher, I said, did you promote this fundraiser? Because your kids sold a lot. And she said, oh, yeah, I promoted it. And um, one of the kids spoke up and said, uh, yeah, she told us if we won, if our classroom sold the most, then we'd get a pizza party because she wanted that Scentsy warmer. So um, if you want, and you can use your free and half price to get that. That's the wonderful thing. You get all the free and half price, so you can use that. Um, so anyway, once the fundraiser comes in, I give them two weeks, regardless of the fundraiser, two weeks. I close it out two weeks from the time it starts, and I start at the beginning of every, or not every month, I don't do one every month, but I start at the beginning of the month. So that way when you have your stragglers coming in, um, you're not rushing at the end of the month to try to get everybody's in. And I know some places have certain weeks or certain days of the week they cut checks on. So when they cut a check, you, I mean, when you bring your fundraiser in, you might have to wait four or five days to get the check from them because they only cut checks on Wednesdays or whatever. So the best thing to do is start at the beginning of the month, run it two weeks. And then um, I go in there and I collect all the forms from the teachers. I have all the teachers send them to the front office or I'll go around to their classrooms. That way the school doesn't have to do anything. I work with the bookkeeper and the money. Um, some will let you do that, some won't. I have all checks made out to the organization if they will let me do that. If they have an account and they'll let me do that, I let I make have all checks made out to the organization and then have them cut me one check. Makes it so much easier. And then I take it to their bank and I cash it and put the cash in my account. That way you're not waiting on a check to clear. Um, I do take credit cards. That takes time because obviously some people's credit cards will not run after they've given it to the student two weeks before. And you have to call them and find out. So that does take time. Um, and then after the money's collector, after everything's done, of course I enter it all. And then when the order comes in, of course it comes to my house and my living room is like slammed full for about a week. I label everything, I package everything, and I package it by student and then by classroom. So um, let's see, what do you do with the host rewards and half price products on fundraisers? Um, I take them. I take them all, obviously, and I will take them and turn around and resell the product at maybe a show or to customers or whatever I'm doing that, that year after that fundraiser. Um, I usually use the product to help stop my couple of fall shows that I do. So I take that product and do that with it. Um, if you don't think you can afford the half prices, then buy light bulbs with them. Everybody always needs light bulbs. Um, I also break up my fundraisers into $500 parties so I can maximize my half prices. Now, if you're doing a tax, some, somebody that's tax exempt, you can't break them up into $500 parties. It all has to go one person under one person's name under one order. And that you have to contact Sensi for. So let's see, we have another question. Um, so how do you enter in their orders and when and how do you get their funds that they earned? Okay, so I let them know. Um, 
I enter their orders as soon as I get all the packets in. And oh, that's true, Heather. Yeah. Um, it helps pay for prizes. The free and half price does help pay for the prizes. Um, a lot of times when I'm dealing with young children, I'll do buddy clips or buddies as prizes and they love them. And that in turn, a lot of times turns around and ha I have repeat sales because parents don't know we have buddies or buddy clips. And so they come back to me and they're like, my child loves this. Now my other child wants one. So, um, how do you enter the, okay. So I enter the orders as soon as I get them. And like I said, I break them up into $500 parties to maximize my half prices. Um, their funds, of course, it comes when I get paid. So I always let them know that they will receive their check after the 10th on the following month after we close the fundraiser. That I let them know I get paid on the 10th and that, that and of course, then I have to transfer it to my bank. So I just tell them within a few days after the 10th of the month. When I cut them a check, I also do an invoice. And um, it's just super easy. I got a mock invoice off the internet and it shows the product. I just put, a lot of times I just put product sold or Cincy product sold. I don't remember exactly what I put. I think I might've uploaded an example on here, but it would be way back. Um, and then I put an amount they sold and the commission amount and then the total amount of the check. So um, I'll include that in there as well. And then I always make a copy of my check and a copy of the invoice and I file it away for tax purposes. So um, let's see, I take everything up there, I distribute everything and everyone that has ever done a Sensi fundraiser with me has said that is the easiest fundraiser we've ever done. Um, another idea I mentioned last week is um, Let's see, you can make a giant check at local printers to create a nice photo. Oh, good idea, Heather. I didn't even think of that. I've never done that. That's really cool. Heather, do you have, um, if you have an example of one that you did, because I know you've done a couple of really big fundraisers, I would love to see that picture. That's a great idea, y'all. Um, Heather said that she, where you can make a giant check at a local printer and then it makes a great photo op. So it shows everyone how much you've given back to the school or to the organization. Okay, so one thing that I do, and I put it in my parent info sheet, and this is not something you have to do, it's just something I do that it's in there and if anyone calls me and wants to book a party, whether it be a basket party or home party, and they tell me that they got my information from the fundraiser. When we do that party, I will give 10% of what my commission is from that party back to the organization that they got my information from. So that can help you get some parties. Some people are like, well, I'll do a party just to help whatever it is they're so passionate about that organization. So um, in these packets, and I went over this last week and I'm going to do it briefly right now. Um, my outside of my packets, first of all, I always use the, um, well, there we go. I love these fundraising envelopes out of the family store. I love them, love them, love them. Has everything on it you need. And they're very inexpensive. I also put this sheet at the staple it to the outside. It's just a quick sheet that tells them a little bit of really quick information. Um, Dear parents, please see enclosed sheet for information. There's some great new products and prizes. Return fundraiser to by this date. Please help your child. Please help support your child by participating in this fall fundraiser. If you have any questions, please contact and then my information. So it's just kind of a quick little sheet. And then when they open up their packet, the first thing they're going to see is the parent info sheet. Sorry, I'm like backwards on here. The parent info sheet. And this should be uploaded into the documents. It's just a quick um, FAQ on Sensi, the benefits of Sensi, when and where you can use it, what's included in the packet. Um, and then that's where their prizes are, who they'll make the check out to, 
every bit of information they need. They just have to actually take the time to read it. So if they charge tax, and I'm going to be honest, I've never had a problem with them charging tax or paying tax. Uh, you would think with a school fundraiser coming home, and this was my big fear, oh, they're going to have to calculate tax. Never a problem. They kind of assume that. So I always put, and it doesn't have to be all the products. This is an Excel document, I think. And um, it's the, I use it, I call it the tax cheat sheet. Like I said, it doesn't have to be all the products. I just kind of put a few products in there with prices, the tax, and then the total. And this is what I covered last week that is a, um, a controversial thing. Y'all can use these at your own risk. When I'm doing small fundraisers, I use our regular order forms. When I'm doing really large fundraisers, like 800 kids, I use these. These are in the file section. These are the old, old Sensi um, fundraiser order forms. They used to be carbon copy, and I happened to find one like four, year, four or five years ago um, when I was cleaning out a filing cabinet I had. I realized I had some of those. And so I just photocopied them and I use them. I do photocopy them then front and back. The back has the um, notice of cancellation and all that on them. So if you use these, I would highly recommend photocopying them front and back so you have this information on there as well. Um, and like I said, use those at your own risk. Some, some people have said compliance says we can't use them. I've talked to some people at home office and they say that we can as long as we do front and back. So I, that's up to you. Um, and then, of course, our, and this is an old one, our showcase brochure. So when you're doing a full catalog fundraiser, I don't use regular catalogs. That's too expensive. It takes too much time for them to look through. There's no reason to use them. Showcase brochures are in the family store, and they are very inexpensive. They're very easy to flip through and see. I actually use these two at events because people can flip through them so easy and see our products. Um, the only difference is when you are using these, they do not have the combined and saves in them. And they do that to number one, make it easier and number and less confusing, and number two, to maximize the sales for that organization. So um, these are wonderful. Showcase brochures. I do label them. I try to label them bigger than that, but I've got a little label on this one. I label every one of them. I put a $99 sticker on them. That helps with recruiting. I have gotten recruits. I have gotten parties from fundraisers. And I always put the this sheet in front of it, the parent info and order forms and everything. And I put it like that. Now, um, one thing you can use and I don't use them anymore. They became too time consuming for me. But you can if you're just doing a small fundraiser, like a few people or an individual one. And this is in the document section. I don't know if it's current because I don't use it anymore. But I did use these and I laminated it. And you put, um, you use our rub and smell stickers on them. So that way they kind of have a variety of scents to smell. So I would not recommend these for big fundraisers. Like I said, they could get costly and they're time consuming, but they're great for small ones. Um, I kind of got my stack here that I'm going through that reason. Another thing I do, when I get the fundraiser packets back in, make copies of everything. Um, I will pull out the order forms out of each packet one at a time, make my copies, make my copy of that one, put it back in the packet, and I do that for each child or each little packet. That way I can keep the packets original the way they came back to me so I can go back to them when their product comes in. I make copies of everything and these are my copies. I call them my working copies. That way I can go through, I can check everything off as I put it on the order. Um, and you see I got my little red marks right there. Well, you can't see it because I can't figure out the camera. I um, got my little red marks. So I have my working copy, and I keep that with me, and that's what I do my marking on. Um, a lot of times you're going to have to call customers. 
because they put down a scent that doesn't come in a scent pack. And you got to call them and find out what they want. Or you got to call them because their credit card didn't go through. So all of that is done on here. So I have my working copies. I never have to touch the originals again until their product comes in. Um, let's see. Okay. So real quick, anybody have any questions about the full catalog fundraiser or the showcase brochures? If you do, go ahead and type it in and I'll get right back to it. Um, look at this. I thought I had an example of one of the signs that I posted around the schools and stuff, but I didn't. Okay. Um, so real quick, one thing, another thing I do, of course, I said the $99 stickers. They're in the family store. On my catalogs, where did those stickers go? Hold on. Okay. On my catalogs, on a lot tons of things that go out. I use these. I had some new ones I was going to show y'all. Somewhere in here. I don't know. I don't know what happened to them. Anyway, I use these. I love these stickers. You can put them on your envelopes when you're mailing out your bills. Just make sure your return address label has your Sensi website or all your information showing that um, which my return address labels have my Sensi website on it. Um, you can so you can do it when you're mailing out bills, cards, um, put it on catalogs, put it on all kinds of stuff. Love these because a lot of people don't realize we do fundraisers. They think, oh, Sensi's just home party. That's all. That's all we can do with that. So um, another thing, I will put these on my showcase brochures. Um, where are the fundraiser stickers? Fundraiser stickers are in the um, family store. And I know I just bought some more. And I thought I brought them over here to show y'all. Maybe this is them. Oh, yeah. Here's the new ones. Or the one, not new, but they're the ones I just bought because I had them in a bag. So um, <clears throat> I just bought these but they're in the family store. So the showcase brochures, like I said, I put the $99 sticker on it. I label it with all my information. And then I also just randomly pick um, rub and smell stickers. I only put one on each one. There's no reason to cover it in rub and smells. It just kind of gives people an idea. And I always pick popular scents, like perfectly pomegranate, something that's going to smell really good on the showcase brochure that's going to really kind of when they pull it out you're going to be able to smell it because I know some of our rub and smells don't smell as strong so um, anyway rub and smell I put it on the outside of the showcase brochure the inside wherever you want to put it or you can use like the scent of the month ones I've done that and I just randomly pick them so that way if you've got two kids doing a fundraiser that parent might get a showcase brochure with two different rub and smells. You just never know. It's just kind of what I do. So when the fundraiser comes back in and I get ready to package it for everyone, I take that, um, wait, is it okay to promote a fundraiser in a Facebook event page, almost like a Facebook Sensi party? Um, like what kind of Facebook event page? Is, I would think as long as you have permission, it is okay. Um, as long as wherever whoever has the event, as long as you have permission to promote it, if it's your event, of course you can. But if it's someone else's, just make sure you have their permission and <clears throat> it's, it's okay to promote it. You can even create your own event for a, um, oh, that's another thing. Oh, geez. Um, always put your, of course, always put your website on everything, but in the parent letter, I let them know that their friends and family from out of town can order and there's instructions in there on how to do that just to be sure and order through that particular fundraiser and then um, they email me with the child that gets credited for that and if I don't get an email I will email or call the person that placed the order and find out what child so yes um, Angel I would say yeah as long as you have their permission 
and you can create an event page for a fundraiser also. Um, I'm new, haven't done a fundraiser, but excited to get one booked. Best groups to target and best way to approach. Um, okay, well, in the beginning of this video, we kind of covered the best groups to target. So you may want to go back and watch that. But just to recap, um, mission trips, schools, school organizations such as um, band, cheer, dance, um, competitive dance teams. Um, what else did I say? Nursing homes, individual fundraisers, youth groups. And then I approach them by, <clears throat> I find out who their coordinator is, and then I call them and try to set up a meeting. So, but go back and watch the beginning of the video and I kind of cover it in more detail. So when I get the um, fundraiser in, I make, I make small samples. I'm not gonna give everyone one of our pretty little butterfly samples or something like that. I'm talking small samples. And I did not bring in here the sample thing I use. It's just a little flat thing. Make small samples. I use these cards from the family store, the print your own. Now it's not the um, customer loyalty ones. That's what I was trying to think of. It's just the print your own business card. So there's nothing on the back but Scentsy. And you can get a template for it on the family store. And I'll just type out what I can. Something like, um, thank you for supporting such and such school or organization. Um, you helped raise this amount. That, whatever. If you have any problem or if you have any questions about your order or ready to re need to reorder or something, I can't remember exactly what I say, but you know how to say it. Um, but I let them know what they helped raise. I thank them for what they for order, uh, ordering and um, and helping with the fundraiser and what they helped raise. And it's, it kind of all goes back here and then my contact information. And then they have a very small sample in the front of a different scent. So I put those in everybody's bag. So at least they have a small business card type thing for me. Thanking me. Um, let me see what else we might want to cover. Uh, okay, benefits. Like a, a lot of this we covered last week. Benefits of a fundraiser. Some of your benefits are going to be... Um, giving back to the community, new customers, lots of new customers. It's a great way to get new customers. Y'all, I can't tell you how many people and how many new customers I have gotten just from a fundraiser because they didn't know um, where to. Sorry, my phone's ringing, and I don't know who that is. Okay. They didn't know um, where to find a Sensi consultant locally. Um, incentive trip points. Fundraisers are a great way to get incentive trip points because your PRV is going to grow a whole lot more with the fundraiser. Yeah, you're giving back your commission, but it's going to grow. Um, annual sales award, that's another thing. Um, one thing I didn't cover is what I do give back with a showcase brochure fundraiser. Um, I give back... 25% if the fundraiser is under 2000 and I give back 30% if the fundraiser is over 2000 Some of you may not be able to give that back if you're just starting out, and that's perfectly fine because you're going to need to cover your cost or some of your cost. Um, so give back 20% and save that 5%, and then if it goes over 2000 give back 25 and save that 5% to help cover your cost. That's totally up to you. That's a personal decision. Um, so the percent you give back is completely up to you. You do what you think you can do. And don't put yourself out and don't go broke doing it. That's some of the best advice I have ever gotten from um, people when I started this business was do not go broke doing it. In other words, don't get in that family store and order <laughs> everything under the sun, all the t-shirts, all, yes, it's great, but do it as you can. And um, you'll eventually collect everything you need. 
So um, if you can't give back the 25 and 30, don't do that. Do 20 and 25. Um, so let's see. One last thing, and then it's been about 30, a little over 30 minutes, and I didn't want to go over 30 minutes. But um, one last little idea. This is um, Patty is going to cover in detail the scent circles and other fundraisers like that. But I wanted to touch on it real quick. Um, so another, a few other fundraisers you can do. Scent circles, buddy clips. A lot of people are loving the buddy clips. Um, Y'all, my daughter, she took her backpack into dance the other day. And after she took her backpack into dance, I got a phone call this morning on my way home from taking her to school. And she said, okay, um, my child wants that thing that's on your daughter's backpack. Can I order that? And I'm like, yeah, sure. She said she won't stop talking about it. She loves it, and it smells so good. So she has the emoji buddy clip on her backpack, and it does smell good. And every time she gets in the car, I can smell it. So um, just from her wearing that on her backpack, sales. I know that doesn't relate to fundraisers. but And then she's like, oh, well, while I've got you on the phone, I need bulbs, and I need a tub of washer whiffs. So, and two bars of I've given her a scent of something. Um, the berry paradise, the scent of the month. And her daughter loves that. And she's like, yeah, she wants, um, we need two bars of that berry paradise. So anyway, uh, buddy clips are huge. The kids love them. Um, I put a buddy clip or a scent pack in my um, daughter's dance bag because those dance shoes stink. Um, you can put them in your son's um bag his like sports bag so anyway she'll cover those in detail but this is just kind of these sheets are there's some in the workstation there's some uploaded to our page but these sheets are great i had them laminated just to show one time so and you can this is an old 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 one but you can kind of see it makes it so easy and these would also be easy if you did it like that and then you had the scents on the back with one of these but like I said those can be time-consuming and expensive but anyway scent circle fundraisers super easy kind of like Girl Scout cookies um, my my people around here they want to do the showcase brochure so I don't have a lot of scent circles but I know Patty's done several and I know um, one of my downline that's all he does scent circle buddy clips things like that he doesn't even do the showcase brochures because people there want those because they're easier for them and my people want variety so it depends on your location and it depends on what your customers want so okay I think that covers a good bit for now a lot of it like I said we covered last week but I wanted to cover again because we've added a lot of new people so um, if anyone has any questions don't hesitate to inbox me and um, I'll be glad to answer any of your questions and help you up I froze again hold on Okay, I froze again. Sorry, y'all. Anyway, like I was saying, I will be glad to answer any of your questions. Just inbox me, and I'll help you any way I can. Because um, fundraiser, fundraisers are kind of my passion. I love them. I love helping the community. My kids get involved in them. That's another thing. You can let your kids label. Put the $99 stickers on there. Um, get them involved. So thank you all for watching, and I hope that... We can all get tons of fundraisers and all meet up on that boat next year. So thank you again, and um, I will talk to you all soon. Bye.